Alright, what up everybody? We're here with another review, another brand new album just came out yesterday. Let me see this. The new Baroness, Gold and Gray. Uh, years ago, you know, I had found Baroness, our buddy Charlie showed them to me, uh, right after Blue had come out. And man, I loved Red and I loved Blue. And years ago, we reviewed Green. Wow, it looks like all their other discs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we reviewed Green and Yellow. And I don't remember shit. I remember just not liking it. Not liking it at all. I remember even... I'll never forget the line where you were like... You said, man, yeah, why does it have to suck? Like, green's my favorite color. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck, man? First we get, we get what? Ice and blood. Now we got puke and piss. Uh, but now... Uh, a couple months ago, <laughs> well, go back to a couple years ago, Purple came out, and I was like, eh, I'm not going to buy any of there. I don't even have yellow and green at this point. I was like, eh, I'm not going to check it out, you know, eventually, maybe one day. Well, a couple months ago, there was a lot of hype for, for gold and green. I'm like, you know what, since they got a new one, let me go ahead and get green and yellow and purple and, uh, I turned on green and yellow and wound up loving the shit out of it. Uh, who knew? What, seven years later that a, an album I haven't heard in seven years? I'm like, wow, this is actually some really good shit. I remember Green Theme was a good one. Yeah, there's a lot of really good shit on there. Um, so then I turn on Purple, and I really dug Purple. Uh, purple had a lot of good shit on it, but I don't know, there's something too loud and compressed about the mix. I don't know what the fuck. I thought the, deal the mix is. was weird on this one. Yeah, the mix is a little weird on some of the some of it on here. It's not as bad as purple or, or as noticeable. Like as I purple. wanted to hear the bass a little more, but then everything else was kind of cut out. Yeah, like, I'm not a sound file, so I don't know what I'm looking I for. I mean, you know? like because yellow and green sound <sighs> great uh, in the mix. And uh, blue and red sound really fucking good in their mix, but purple, man, there's just something very compressed and loud about it. That when did they get the female uh, the guitar player? I can't remember if she start started on purple or on this one. So there's really only one, um, one original guy now. Uh, possibly. I actually, I'd have to look that up, but yeah. And so. Purple kind of mixes green and yellow is a pretty soft album compared to red and blue, uh, but there's some decently heavy shit on there. But uh, I, I like the shit of it now. Purple kind of goes a little more heavier, uh, but the screaming man, like it started on gold and, or, or green and yellow, where the screaming is gone considerably, and now screaming's all gone. On uh, gold and gray, like there, the Baroness from Red is no longer with us. The Baroness from they Blue do not exist. Is no longer with us, and uh, you know, s parts of that I'm like, oh, uh, because Red's my favorite one. Red's my favorite one. It's got a more doomy sound, the with the low guitar drones, the melodic drones and stuff, and Blue. Blue is probably my Probably my next favorite, but now I'm kind of leaning more toward green and yellow being my next favorite. But uh, that's what Charlie said when it came out. He was loving it, and I just remember being like, "I don't know what you're listening to because I we heard <laughs> completely you different things." Yeah. But, but now, yeah, it's probably a toss up between blue, green, and yellow. Like I really like those two, but but red. I don't like, like how this is supposed one, to be a double when it's on one disc, just like some Vampire Weekend. So yeah. Um, there's 17 tracks here. And I don't the like album, the digipack either. The album is... Uh, is purple in a digipack? Yeah, purple's in a digi too. Yeah. I like these, man. I like these. Uh, but, yeah, it's 17 tracks, and the album is gold and gray. So yellow and green was a double album. Two separate discs. Makes sense. You've got a disc for green and a disc for yellow. Uh, then they do purple, which is a one disc, and now we get gold and gray. And... But it's all on one disc. So are you calling this a double album or not? Because clearly you're going for the double color scheme. But, uh, you know, it's one fucking disc. Are you doing it to save money? I don't fucking know. It's 17 tracks. 
Probably the same reason and, Vampire Weekend had one disc. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, man. What's what's going on here? But, Maybe uh, it costs too much to produce CDs now. But it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Uh, like I'm sure it costed them a whole lot more to get all the this shit pressed on vinyl. I don't um, know. I don't know what the uh, cost of that stuff is. But uh, let me see here. What did you think about the Golden Gray? I was bored. <laughs> I mean. The beginning of the album was very solid. I was into it. I got about seven tracks in, and then I just kind of tapped out because it all started melding together with the same vocal. Yeah. Like, the vocals never fucking change to the point where I'm just like, all right, dude, can we just get some instrumental parts now? Because... He sounds like fucking... What's his name? Uh, Russell Crowe. Singing in Les Mis. <laughs> making movies, making I'm songs. I'm sorry, Baroness fans, but I just don't, I can't get behind the way this guy sings. He, it's the biggest reason why I hate New Mastodon. Because the drummer tries to sing now, and he fucking sucks. Yeah, this, uh, this is a band where I really liked their screaming vocals because there was a uniqueness to it. There was, a, there was almost a harmony to their screams. And, but now the way this guy has been singing for a while, it's just not that great to me. Yeah. Um, I like it on I mean, yellow gonna, and green. To me, if you're going to do something like that, do it like the sword does it. I like it on purple. But I don't know what it is. Like you said on here, some of it's a little... He has, some of it, his, his, <laughs> the songs will be too heavy. For yeah. his style of singing that he does on And here. he's going through some kind of a... Some kind of vocal effects that make it sound so. more echoey. There's probably some reverb on there. Yeah, that, that throw... That, it's like... That might be cool on one or two songs. But the entire record... Your vocal delivery is the same on the last track as it was on the first track. Yeah. It, it, That's why I'm getting bored with it. It does. Now, the, the album starts off, and I'm actually not really into the first couple tracks. Uh, Front Toward Enemy is a okay starter, but nothing really special. I'm Already Gone is decent enough, uh, but then... Seasons is a, is pretty cool, but I'm not really into it at the point. But then when we get to Savage, the instrumental, and this is what I'm about to say. To me, some of the best shit on here are the instrumental tracks or the little interludes in between other tracks. Like, those are fucking great. Uh, but, yeah, and then what else is on here? A tourniquet I dig. I really like Tourniquet. Um, Anchor's Lament is amazing. The, to me, he, he on the little musical interlude parts, he's singing better on those shorter tracks than most of the uh, most of the actual songs. But Anchor's Lament, fucking love it. Uh, I really like Throw Me an Anchor, the way it just rolls in uh, right after Anchor's uh, Anchor's Lament. Doesn't he have a female harmonizing with him? On there, some yeah, the lady. Uh, I believe that's the same lady who's playing guitar. Okay, those, um, those parts were cool. Cause yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, she adds a different element. Yeah, kinda like with Carlessa. Uh, Kind of like with Kylesa. Why well, I like Kylesa is because they got a female singer okay. who shares with the guy singer. And, I'm, and uh, they're from Savannah, too. So it's like there's a, kind of a weird thing going on, you know, with these bands, like being similar, being from the same area, you know. Like, it's all Georgia-based bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, love Throw Me an Anchor. Um, I'd do anything is uh, dumb. I am not a fan of I'd Do Anything. It's way too soft, too much of a ballad. But is it the one where I'd do anything? Uh, yeah, he's like, I am selfish, I am wrong, I'm scared to be alone. Every aching joint breaking at the bone. Um, and I'd do anything to feel I'm alive again. I'd do anything to feel like I'm alive. I would do anything to feel like I'm alive again. I'd do anything. That sounds Those like so a fucking simple plan song. Just real lame lyrics to me. I'd um, do anything. 
If you pulled gently, I'd fall right back into line again. You helped me check myself, and I'm all, and all that I surrounded, or surround. Um, it was moments ago I knew exactly what to say. Spilling on the ground, the words forever golden gray. But, yeah, I am not a fan of that track. Way too slow. But... Sounds like someone in emotional. What's weird right? is I'm almost wondering. All right, is what? Here's my question: How do I know which? Where does gold end? <laughs> all right, where does gold end and where does gold? Uh, where does gray begin? Because there's no theme song. And exactly, you know, no you green had a theme, gold, yellow theme. Yellow, yeah, but I, I kind of when you listen to it, I kind of feel that the the instrumental "Blankets of Ash," which is fucking amazing. Is sort of that <clears throat> in between uh, because for the rest of the album after that there's almost a different vibe uh, because then you get into Emmett uh, radiating light love that fucking track cold-blooded angels is fucking great um, and then you've got crooked mile another awesome little interlude uh, broken halo fucking awesome uh, then another interlude with Can um, Oscura, and then Borderline, uh, Borderlines, really fucking good track, and then another interlude, Assault on East Falls, love that, and I believe that's the last track, uh, Pale Sun, Pale Sun is the album. To me, from the album, I enjoy a lot more of uh, when we get to Emmett, Radiating Light, uh, or Emmett. Is this Emmett or Emmett? That's, I mean, Emmett, Radiating Light, I fucking know. Emmett. But, I mean, but it's spelled like the name, Emmett. So, is that like a play on words? I don't know. But to me, the album gets better from that point on. And I like the musical interludes all throughout the album. Uh, <sighs> but, I mean, yeah, like, him using the same voice, because it's not a very good voice to me. Mm -hmm. um, and him using that same voice on almost all of the tracks... Is not great, but when you get to some of the interludes and he's harmonizing and not gonna lie with the music and the interludes being more interesting than the standard kind of metal shit that he's normally does, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like damn, my favorite shit is the is are the interludes and some of it starts to kind of have a Fleet Foxes vibe to it, you know, with the harmonies and what they choose to use in that interlude, man. There's it's really good shit. Uh, I actually dig the shit out of the album, even though, you know, I got a decent amount to uh, complain about. I really dig it, you know. It sounds a little better than Purple. I got to turn Purple back on. It's been a couple weeks, and because I just was getting way more into Yellow and Green, and Purple, just like I said, has that awful mix, man. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know whoever the fuck mixed that album. Uh, it needs to be fired. Um, what if it was the singer? <laughs> right, right. Oh, I need to find out, man. But Golden Gray, and then also it's a it's the end of the uh, the color scheme. I actually never knew this until recently when the album was being talked about. Um, the guy was saying, "Yeah, it's our final color album," and so I'm thinking, you know, oh, they just picked random colors, mm. and that he's tired of picking random colors. And until Charlie was talking about, yeah, man, it's the final color album, man. It's like it goes along the whole color uh, spectrum thing. I'm like, oh, wait, like the rainbow? He's like, yeah, man, it's like all supposed to be like the rainbow colors. And I'm like, oh, I get it. That's why it's the end, because it's like... As opposed to uh, Weezer putting out random yeah, colors. Yeah, just random like colors, you know? teal. <laughs> teal. Yeah, that's so fucking awesome. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Pick some ridiculous <coughs> cover colors to do your Magenta. album. Magenta. Yeah, like like with Beat Beat Manifesto's new album, motherfucking o OPEC. I don't know what the fuck you call that, and it's a ugly. I mean, I brown think, green. I don't think anyone gets better than Primus. Yeah, brown album. Man. Brown album. <laughs> <laughs> fucking brown like Beatles album. have the white album. Metallica have the black one. <laughs> Primus has brown. <laughs> but uh. So, like, uh, you got any more thoughts on... Not really. I just wish the guy had, like, more range in his vocals because I don't remember getting bored by his singing before. 
Yeah. And this one, I just kind of feel like he just, <laughs> it's like bareness by numbers. Like, what worked on the last few albums? All right, let's do that huh. again. There's definitely some of that on here. It's, I, I hate it, but I can't get into it more because I'm turned off by his vocal work. Because the music is great. The music sounds amazing because these guys are very talented. It's just I kind of wish that they would go out of their comfort zone a little bit. And do something. They do, like on the interludes, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, well, and that should like, be like in every song, though. I'm like, damn, y'all. Like, give me a. And then they, they move a little bit out of the comfort zone when you when you get toward the end of the album. Give me a mandolin. Like, give me a didgeridoo. Yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> throw some different instruments on there. Like, man. we know you can play guitars <laughs> and drums and all this metal music, but can you didgeridoo? Yeah, can you didgeridoo? <laughs> Um, but yeah, what, what rating would you give? You only heard it once. <sighs> but this is solely based on his vocal work. I would say five. Mm, damn. Average. I mean, yeah, it's very average. I don't feel like I'm going to be coming back to this album. Yeah, there's no... Man, red this, and blue and green and yellow have that's like grabbing me and telling moments. me, hey, you need to pay attention because this song is awesome. Like, there's no, other than the interludes, there's like no epic moments on, on, on here. I mean, red and, red and blue were fucking great back in the day and they still are today. And it's like, why? And I liked, I liked red and blue more than I liked any of the early Mastodon I just kind of, I just don't understand why bands, are, are we just getting old or, I don't know, like, after they put out like four, four, maybe five albums, they just kind of start to get into a comfort zone where everything sounds the same or very bland. <laughs> Like that South Park episode. Yeah. Where it sounds like shit. You're just a cynical asshole. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give it a damn solid ass eight. Wow. Uh, based off of the interludes. interludes <laughs> you know, like these little twenty second songs. <laughs> I love it because of those. Um, <laughs> you know, I really dig the album though, like because the second half of the album is really fucking awesome to me, and the first half is uh, it's all right. First half has to me the worst song on the album, which is that uh, I'd do anything. It's ugh, boring, sappy, ugh. Um, but garbage. That, but the first half does have some badass instrumentals that uh, make it worth hearing and sit throughable. But sit throughable. Yeah, sit throughable. <laughs> make a, making up words. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I dig it. I give it. If an you a. guys like Russell Crowe singing. You're gonna love this. <laughs> Mike and movies, Mike and songs, and four around the world. Yeah, definitely check it out though. If you're a Bears fan, you're checking it out. Um, but who knows? But this, my opinion's coming from a. I'm not a Bears fan, you know. Yeah. Never really been big into them. I mean, I was more of a Mastodon guy until Mastodon started to suck. <laughs> <laughs> They're elephant now. God, they. they because Mastodon have more, I think they're at the point where they have more bad albums than they do good albums. <laughs> Damn. Don't you hate it when, when a band gets to that point? Yeah. It's when you oh, no, they got, got four more. great ones, four amazing ones, and then Hunter fucking sucked. Once more around the sun, I don't remember jack shit. And then the, the Emperor of Sand. I, uh, I remember liking it when it came out, and I remember giving it a good score on here, but I don't remember shit. And then Damn. the EP had, like, one song on there that I was like, they captured what made Crack the Sky great, but too bad this is one song on a four-track EP. Damn. But... I dig the album okay. It was, it's, uh, I pre-ordered this bitch back in April, man. And I forgot it was coming out this week. I thought it was like next week. Mm -hmm. And then I think I woke up Thursday and it was like, boom, ship. What? What shipped? Oh. But, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. It's totally, it's, it's totally a good album. And it's still got that great fucking artwork by the guy. Like, I could just fucking, this is the kind of artwork 
that I totally dig. And the artwork has always been great. Yeah. So even if you don't like the album, you can appreciate the artwork. Yeah, it, it, it looked good as a picture on the wall. But I mean, like, this one, like, okay, yeah, there's a nippy nap. Nippy nap. <laughs> a little nippy nap right there. He, that, there's titties always on, on, on his mm -hmm. uh, various albums. Why do you say nippy nap? A little nip. A little nippy nap. I've never heard of nippy nap. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys later. With next, we're going to talk about the new fucking Romstein.